For the past few years, I've often said that KLM and Finnair are my favorite European airlines. I've flown KLM business class over half a dozen times and never had a bad experience until today. I'll be honest, this really tested my love for KLM because almost everything that could go wrong did go wrong. Let's start from the beginning, shall we? I'm Nonstop Dan, a half Swede and half American who's been obsessed with airplanes for as long as I can remember. Over the past seven years, I've flown 150 different airlines, virtually all self-funded. Nonstop Dan is all about trying to get as much value as possible with my miles or when those are running low, my money. And then spreading the word so you guys get optimal value and can enjoy your travels to the max. And hopefully enjoy my geeky videos along the way. It all started when I went to Dubai in January this year and visited Expo. I'm a sucker for international events that bring together countries from all over the world and I enjoyed it so much I wanted to bring back a family member. Mom was available so I booked her, Oscar and myself on my favorite European airline KLM. I paid their tickets with points costing 42,500 miles plus about 200 euros per person in taxes. Meanwhile my ticket cost $1150 which while a lot of money is actually actually a decent deal for a one-way ticket to Dubai. However, business class was four times the price of economy, and as you're about to see, it wasn't nearly worth the price premium. Originally, the flight I found was perfect. We'd fly from Gothenburg to Amsterdam on their cute Embraer 175s, enjoy three hours of work in the KLM Crown Lounge, and then fly the 787-9, featuring KLM's hands down best product to Dubai to show my mom the best side of KLM. The only caveat was that in typical KLM fashion, this flight was part of a triangle route. A triangle route is a flight that operates to two cities in a row, forming something that resembles the shape of a triangle. It picks up and drops off passengers in both cities but starts and ends at the airline's hub. In this case, our flight would take us to Dubai with a 70 minute ground stop in Kuwait City, getting us to our destination at the brutal hour of 2.25 AM. May there not be any delays, right? Our flight left at the wonderful hour of 10 a.m. so we didn't have to get up too early and we got to the airport in high spirits. Good morning. Hello. Hello. We are heading, all three of us, to Dubai. Just checking in. Hello. How do you feel? Excited and happy. <laughs> Good. How do you feel? <laughs> Same. <laughs> in no time, we made it through security. So a pro tip for anyone with an Amex Platinum or Gold card, you can get free breakfast or lunch at Espresso House. You just have to show the card. They'll tell you what you can get, but it's usually a warm drink. So like coffee or chai latte or something. I always get the chai latte, a juice and a sandwich, salad, or some sort of breakfast item. So it's really, really awesome. A perk that many people don't know about. Valid, of course, if you get a Swedish, Amex Gold or Platinum as well link below. We enjoyed our free breakfast in the lounge as our aircraft taxied in from Amsterdam. The anticipation was really building and we were hyping mom up, possibly a little too much. KLM Business Class is one of mine and Oscar's favorite European Business Class products. My mom has never tried it before, so we're excited to see what she thinks. Of course, I hope she'll love it. So let's board our tiny little Embraer 175 down to Amsterdam. Can you tell this video was originally intended to be something along the lines of why I love KLM so much? Ouch. <laughs> At 9.44 AM, we boarded our right. little tiny little bit of Brazilian Embraer 175 and were greeted by a lovely crew as I'm used to on KLM. We settled in and quickly realized that the other two passengers who were supposed to be in business class with us hadn't made it. So we got to enjoy the entire cabin to ourselves. As always, when we spooled up, we got to enjoy the soothing sounds of the engines. Am I the only one who finds these sounds super relaxing? Sound has actually been shown to help you focus, elevate your exercise, or even sleep. And if sitting on airplanes 24-7 isn't your thing, I have good news. There's actually a patented technology that generates soundscapes that respond to your location, heart rate, and even the weather. Enter Endel, an app that scientifically generates soundscapes to help you relax instantly. 
have laser sharp focus in all settings, or sleep in any time zone by integrating with your circadian rhythm. It's pretty amazing to have sounds custom generated for you. And best of all, the first 100 people to download Endel at the link right below in the description box will get a free week of audio experiences. The flight down to Amsterdam was stunning, with beautiful weather from takeoff to landing. And if you live in Northern Europe, you know that that is almost unheard of this time of year. I love that KLM has brought back their in-flight magazine since last summer, in fact. There's nothing more satisfying than opening it up during boarding and looking at the fleet and destination pages. That I may already know by heart. Once in the big AMS, we had to take a bus to the terminal, as is often the case with KLM City Hopper. On the way there, we spotted Papa Hotel Bravo Hotel Delta, the 787-9 that was gonna take us to Dubai a few hours later. The last time I was in the new non-Schengen Crown Lounge in January 2020, I didn't realize just how big the lounge was. Most people sit right by the entrance and don't explore the multitude of seating areas offered. I mean, this requires some serious decision making. The lounge feels like 10 places in one and is branded in every imaginable way. KLM really nails its branding in my opinion. The quirky Dutch global vibe is just my cup of tea. So I'm a sucker for KLM's houses and I just saw that they have an exhibition of all 102 houses they ever made here in the lounge. On the top floor, they have a restaurant and bar. The former is closed due to COVID-19 and the latter is only open until 1 p.m. Strangely, they make you pay for most drinks up here, which is quite the contrast to other quality airlines. They even charge for something as basic as a mocktail and the price, oh boy. Still, it's a fun concept and there's a small selection of free food downstairs. Considering that this is the only lounge for all of KLM's non-Schengen flights from their main hub, the food selection isn't exactly overwhelming, but you won't go hungry either. It's better to feast on these drool-worthy views from the outdoor terrace. Despite the cold this time of year, nothing can stop me from braving the elements to enjoy the sweet smell of jet fuel. But all of a sudden. So plot twist, things can never be easy apparently because I just got a text saying our flight was delayed 15 minutes, which obviously is no big deal. I went in just to read the details and then I saw, wait a minute, what is seat 5C? I selected 8A. So I thought, oh, it just must be some error, right? So I went and tried to see the seat map couldn't see anything. So then I went to the flight details and saw, hold on a minute, where is the 787 Dreamliner I booked? Now the flight is showing as a 777-200, which, you know, don't get me wrong, that's a great airplane too, but a KLM, there's the good seat, and then there's the other seat, and that seat is the one you want to avoid. Of course, I booked this flight specifically via Kuwait instead of going direct to Dubai so that my mom could experience the best that KLM has to offer, the 787-9. Now we're on the same 777 seat that normally goes to Dubai and a bunch of other destinations, so non-stop Dan and the curse of equipment swaps seems to continue. <laughs> So yeah, that was a bummer. Changing from one aircraft to another wouldn't be such a big deal if it didn't mean a massive downgrade in terms of seating. Losing our pre-selected seats and, you know, every son wants their mom to have the best of the best. I really wouldn't have been so upset if it hadn't been that I'd specifically gone out of my way to get my mom a specific experience, only to have that taken away at the last second when it's too late to change anything. But the airline industry is complex and things happen. Happen. It didn't need to get any worse than this, at least. At 2 p.m., we left the lounge, and on the way, I noticed something. Uh, and we have to keep changing our seats and making them even worse. Great. I also noticed our original 787-9 at our OG gate with its engines wide open. Go figure the Boeing 787 was having engine problems. 
I'll stop with the sarcasm now and just say wow. The KLM 777-300 in the orange hybrid livery is mesmerizing in person. I don't think I've ever been this close, but we walked past it on the way to our gate. This bad boy was actually heading direct to Dubai 15 minutes before the departure of our flight. What I had done to be able to switch to this. More convenient, more beautiful from the outside, and now with the same seat as our flight anyway. KLM is a very tech-forward airline. You can text them in almost half a dozen ways that let you track your bags in their app, and best of all, their gates have these awesome seat maps from the aircraft parked at the gate, so you can see exactly where you're gonna sit. That's why I was very surprised to see how badly they handled what unfolded. I headed to the gate and fought for us to get back our seats together, which ended up working out since they'd only moved one of us. More concerning, the fact that it was 2.15pm and our airplane was nowhere in sight. The gate was empty. Thankfully, five minutes later, the aircraft, which had landed three hours prior from Central America, pulled into the gate, connected to the jet bridge, and the crew got on board. The gate agent said we'd be boarding in 20 minutes maximum. The crew just had to perform their pre-boarding duties. In the meantime, we watched all types of fun cargo being loaded on board from tomatoes to pets. I guess the Ferraris fly Emirates. 20 minutes later, there had been no word from the gate agents. Then, another bad sign. One catering truck pulled up at first, and I thought, this can't take long. Well, 10 minutes later, there were five trucks, two of which were waiting to even get started. How can such a tech-savvy airline make these miscalculations? This is a bit ridiculous, because the crew has been on board the plane for about 30 minutes, and it seems like they just noticed that there was no catering on board, which is like, if you've been on board that long, Maybe they should have noticed earlier so they could get a move. All right, it's now been one hour since scheduled departure and they're still doing catering, which just seems like such an avoidable mess. This is so unfortunate and so frustrating, but <laughs> it's especially frustrating since our scheduled arrival time was 2.30 a.m. So God knows what it's gonna be now. <laughs> Couldn't they just have been realistic with the delay from the start rather than saying boarding would start in 20 minutes, which was obviously impossible. That way, passengers could have relaxed, eaten, shopped, done whatever in the meantime. Instead, they wasted 300 people's time by pushing the departure time back when they knew from the start that the plane was not loaded, not catered, nothing. Finally, after we'd all stood around for an hour and 40 minutes, boarding slowly began. Mom, are your spirits still high? Uh, definitely. <laughs> good. That's good. At least on camera. Yeah, <laughs> on camera. Behind camera, it's like, ugh. We finally got on board and my mom was super happy. She loved the seat because she didn't know what she was missing on the 787, so I let her enjoy it. I immediately got told off for filming, explained I wasn't recording any faces, and eventually became friendly with a flight attendant who, although being Dutch, lives 20 minutes away from us in Sweden apparently. As you can see, this 777 seat was less than ideal though. Which brings us to KLM's 777-200ER has a total of 37 business class seats in a 222 configuration. On the positive side, there are no middle seats, which they could have easily installed on the 777 like Emirates or Turkish. On the negative side, this seat is terrible when traveling alone since you have virtually no privacy. The one thing you can do to increase your privacy is to select a seat in this awesome little mini cabin behind the second set of doors. I would have chosen to sit here in an instant if KLM had given us the choice. The only seat to really avoid, ironically, is the one they assigned to me, 5A, since it has a blocked window. But with that, let's put everything that's happened so far aside. Completely disregarding our almost two hour delay and the frustrating equipment swap, what is a flight actually like on the KLM 777? How is the food, the service, and all the rest? The first thing I noticed during boarding was actually how hot the cabin was, and unfortunately there were no individual air vents. At each seat, there was a decent pillow along with this blanket. It was on the thin and small side, but I guess that makes sense with such a hot cabin. There were also two menus and two sanitizing wipes. KLM doesn't offer hygiene kits, but they did hand out a hand sanitizer to my mom along with her amenity kit. Strangely, neither Oscar or I got one. 
The amenity kit is a partnership with Rituals, and while the bag isn't really my taste, my mom liked it and we both agreed the contents were great. The only thing missing in my opinion was a packet of tissues and it would have been P-E-R-F-E-C-T. Perfect. The onboard service started with a choice of water, champagne, orange juice, or Heineken. All served in crystal glasses, which was a nice touch. No plastic here. I love KLM's tableware, as you'll see shortly, which is used to serve the following food. I'm always pretty impressed by KLM's onboard menus, and the options sound exciting to me. The drink menu is also pretty extensive, as is the wine list. The one thing I miss is a good signature drink. What about an orange adventure or apples in Amsterdam? Just some name ideas. Ooh, or what about a tulip inspired drink? Now for a tour of the seat itself. The problem with these types of seats is that they traditionally lack storage space. There's this tiny little area by your left shoulder where you find the headphones, a bottle of water, and your charging port. It doesn't fit much, clearly, but there was also a small storage compartment under the video monitors which definitely helped. With that, let's get out of Amsterdam. Everyone on board was eagerly waiting to depart. In the meantime, the earlier flight to Dubai operated by the Orange 777 had pushed back, taxied around, and then returned to the gate. We ended up both being two hours delayed. What a freaky coincidence the KLM had problems on both Dubai flights. We finally took off at 4.35pm, at which point the sky had already started to darken. At this point, I decided to sleep. No, I didn't, but I knew that if I procrastinated showing the bed any longer, it would be too dark to get a good shot. So here it is. The seat goes fully flat, and thanks to the armrest lowering, it's not too slim. I was worried the foot space would be too small, but I actually found the bed super comfortable. The seat has great padding, and it didn't feel claustrophobic, so thumbs up for that. I also headed to the lavatory which had the same ritual amenities as in the amenity kit, these plastic tulips, and featured the famous KLM Delft houses on the wall. How cute. Back in the seat, the crew felt about the same sense of urgency to get started with the meal service as they did with informing ground ops that there was no catering on board in Amsterdam. Now, a quick comment about the meal. My mom is pescatarian, so I pre-ordered her a vegan meal in case there were no good options on the menu. When she saw the menu, mom loved the look of the poke bowl and the cod dishes though. So she asked to change when the crew was taking meal orders, but they refused. The flight attendant said there was not a single leftover option of anything on the menu, which sounds awfully suspicious to me. Go figure, we saw the crew eating the exact dishes my mom had ordered in the galley later in the flight. Yikes. The meal service started with this cold appetizer that was served all on one tray, which the crew brought out 50 minutes after takeoff. To me, food has always been a strong point for KLM, but for whatever reason, they thought carrots and some lettuce constituted a full salad today. The quote unquote main starter was this mango salad, which tasted about as good as you'd expect Dutch mangoes to taste in February. Still, you gotta appreciate the plates, cutlery, and the adorable salt and pepper shakers. The main course thankfully didn't taste as bad as it looks. It was basically some kind of chickpea, mashed potato, eggplant, and herb dish. It wasn't bad, but the portion was tiny, so I wasn't really satisfied. Dessert, again, was underwhelming, but at least KLM has these adorable chocolate houses. Now, the meal you just saw took two hours for the crew to deliver, which is just way too long given that it was mostly done on a tray. At this point, I don't know what to feel. I've been a big fan of KLM for a long time, but as I mentioned earlier, my other top European airline is Finnair. I flew them in November and they were just as good as I remembered. This meal service was honestly a blunder, both in terms of creativity and especially in terms of portion size. Let's all take a guess how much that meal cost KLM to make in the comments below. Just wait until you see the pre-landing meal. I spent the next few hours happily watching Harry Potter. What a wonderful childhood throwback. 
the entertainment system is pretty decent with multiple episodes of all the TV shows and some pretty good comedy options. There's also Wi-Fi on board that is allegedly so fast you can stream video on it if you get the 30 euro pass, which isn't too bad for a full flight pass with unlimited data usage. About an hour before landing, the pre-arrival meal started with a choice of sandwiches or ice cream. Again, this meal was tiny. Look at it, the sandwich is smaller than a tennis ball. Did I book business diet class or what is up? It's almost better they don't serve anything at all than this little thing. Maybe it's something about Dubai flights being cursed because I got a lot of throwbacks to my Lufthansa flight from Frankfurt to Dubai, which infamously was not great. In all honesty, the highlight of the flight was the Delft houses. On every single long haul flight, KLM hands out these collectibles before landing and it's a genius move because it makes you want to fly KLM again so you can get more. They introduce a new house every year and currently have 102 to collect. There's even an app where you can keep track of them. So we gladly added three new houses to our home collection. Funnily enough, these usually contain alcohol, but I guess it's not allowed on flights to Kuwait. At 11.30 p.m., a little under an hour behind schedule, we touched down in Kuwait and taxied to the gate. Ooh, that rhymed. We were happy to find out that we were allowed to stay on board during the layover, which makes things a whole lot easier when you've spread out your belongings in every nook and cranny of your seat. It is a rather bizarre feeling to land and have half the plane disembark while you stay on board. I've done this a few times before, but never where everyone disembarked through the cabin I was sitting in, which feels even stranger as they walk past. It's a bit weird they chose to disembark from door 1 rather than door 2, but I guess that comes down to Kuwait City Airport rather than KLM. Nonetheless, in no time there was an army of expat workers on board tidying up an instant reminder we had just arrived in the Gulf. To my surprise, only about a dozen people got on in Kuwait. So mom, are we having fun? We're having so much fun. You saw some good movies? <laughs> oh, they were both good? Time goes very fast when you're sitting here. Yeah. All right, it's a quarter past 12. Boarding is done. The jetway is disconnected here in Kuwait. So things so far are going pretty good. We're only half an hour behind at this point. Yay, it's only 18 minutes past 12 and we're already pushing back. Yay. <laughs> now you'll notice I haven't mentioned the service much. Sadly, it was the worst I've ever had on KLM, who usually have great service. I understand if the crew were frustrated by the delay as well as we all were, but it was quite the contrast to their usual cheerful and friendly colleagues. There was a resounding can't-do attitude throughout the flight. As an example, I stupidly expected a meal on the Kuwait to Dubai sector. After all, this is what Qatar Airways serves in economy class from Doha to Dubai, a sector half the length of this. To my surprise, there were only snacks, and for that matter, only two choices. One packaged Stroopwafel or some cheesy crackers. Not exactly a premium offering. I asked if there were any vegan options for us, and they just said nope and left. Then they came around with three different juices on a tray, just holding it out to us without a word. I asked again, are there any other options? Nope. So I went for the cranberry juice. Where on earth does this leave us? I'm sort of sad and embarrassed because for two years, I've been telling people that KLM is a great option for almost all trip types and destinations. Now, I'm honestly not sure. Was I unlucky? Probably. Was my perception of the flight impacted by the delay and aircraft change? Of course. But you can judge for yourself. Would you spend your hard-earned money or points on this or on one of the multitude of competitors like Turkish Airlines, Qatar, Oman Air, or of course, Emirates for flying east? It just doesn't make sense. Let's call this KLM situation a developing story and see how the soft product is on my next few flights with them, but for now, I'll consider this a one-time blunder. So they remain one of my favorite airlines in Europe, between their great lounge, amenities, and generally friendly service based on my previous flights. I find it strange that despite the delay and aircraft change, there was no acknowledgement from KLM. No apology email, no compensation, nothing. 
Even US airlines would compensate you for such an equipment downgrade. Regarding my company, my mom's concluding words were that traveling with me is quote unquote so luxurious. So I'm really glad she enjoyed the experience of being in business class, good product or not. However, one thing is for sure. Next time I'll book my parents, my brother or anyone else I want to treat to a trip on an airline where a good seat and soft product is guaranteed. For flights to Asia, the Middle East, or Africa, I don't think it's worth the risk choosing an airline where you're not consistently guaranteed a good experience. Until I see you all for the next video, fly safe.